Good morning or afternoon, whatever time it is when you're watching this. My name is Erin Star White, and I'm the Director of Community Education for the Fort Worth Botanic Garden in Britt. Uh, and I have the good fortune of talking with the two artists from our current exhibition. Uh, it is called Of the Land, Two Artists Find Renewal in Nature. Uh, it is up from March 26th through June 25th, 2021 in the Madeline Samples Exhibit Hall here in the Brit Building on our campus. And the two artists uh, whose work is in this exhibition are Brenda Cardiello and Camille Warmington. And we are with them today. Um, and I thought that we could have a nice conversation. Uh, the three of us, I've got questions for you. Um, if you wouldn't mind um, each of you saying maybe just a little bit about um, yourselves, uh, how did you how did you come um, to, to finding me and, and Britt and the Botanic Garden? Um, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to whoever wants to answer that question. Um, I think I can probably take that one. Um, so Erin and I have known each other because I have uh, worked with Britt a couple of times teaching classes for their adult education. Uh, programs and also just known each other through kind of the Fort Worth art scene. Um, I kind of had this idea for an exhibit at the Brit because my work is inspired by landscape and botanicals. Um, and I also had in mind Camille's work because I felt like it um, just had a great dialogue with mine. So I actually reached out to Erin. Um, I guess it was in either late 2019 or early 2020. Um, with this idea, and that's kind of where it all started to come together. Yeah, so that leads me to um, to a question I had prepared for you all. Um, I think that your bodies of work are in a really lovely conversation with one another in the gallery. How do each of you see your work in relation to the other artists' work? Well, I'll start with, with that one. I, I think that in my mind, deep down, Brenda and I are connected in a number of different ways. I mean, we're both creative people. We're both mothers of three yeah. and we're both women. And I think that, you know, there are kind of deep threads of that that are, that are present in how we make work um, and why we make work uh, uh, and in the work itself. Yeah, I agree with that. I think there are those connections and then there are kind of maybe the more overt, obvious ones, which are that um, we both take inspiration from travel. We both take inspiration from nature in travel. Um, I think both of us are probably uh, very sensitive to and inspired by our natural surroundings. And I always appreciate when I encounter someone else who seems as fascinated as I am by the trees and the leaves and the grass that they're walking by. So uh, naturally that made me gravitate toward Camille. Yeah, I definitely see that. Um, title of the exhibition, uh, Of the Land, Two Artists Find Renewal in Nature. Mm -hmm. Can each of you talk a little about how your work and, and your artistic practice as a whole really relates to that title? Um, obviously, I mean, 2020 has made this very present in, you know, our ability to, to not go places uh, that we normally would. It's, it's meant more just to get out of the house. And even if it's, you know, to go to a park and just being outdoors has been extraordinarily meaningful. Um, you know, I think that there's also a lot of meaning that's come in um, in actually the making of the work is from a kind of meditative healing standpoint. I mean, there's, you know, there's research out in the world that talks about how making lowers your, the cortisol and your stress hormones. And I think that, you know, that also, especially in this last year has, has been really beneficial to me. And I'm, I'm guessing um, with three young children still at home, it's probably even more beneficial to Brenda. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, um, that's very true. Uh, I think it really has been an escape in a lot of ways 
um, both being outdoors, but also being in the studio and creating these images of the outdoors. Um, for me as well, I think the title of the land, it was just like a phrase that kept running through my head. I feel like there's so many connections right now with this, um, both people finding nature again, I think during the pandemic, during lockdown and quarantine, being forced to interact with nature in a way they hadn't been before because they couldn't go to, you know, a concert or a gallery or even the grocery store in many cases. Um, and so connecting to the land in that way, but also connecting to the land in the sense that, you know, here's this kind of very biological threat, right? This um, virus that is a, as much a natural thing as we are and as plants are. And all of these things are connected and kind of we're having to find ways to help each other through it by learning how to interact with those different natural aspects of living on this earth together. So really for me, it was like, gosh, everybody is so connected. Everybody is so completely part of this earth together. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, Brenda, your work uh, is in this exhibition, All Watercolor. Uh, with with other media, but that's that's the main medium. Um, you chosen the medium of watercolor. Yeah, so I mean, gosh, I just I can't get away from the water. I think that's just I love the ocean. I love you know rivers. I love water in general, um, and always have. Uh, and so watercolor to me always was fascinating in that way. Um, I love seeing the way that you've got this very raw natural element and you get to watch it move on the paper and not just move, but create this um, footprint of water, right? You can actually see where the water has been on your painting in a watercolor because of the translucent nature of it. So to me, it was extremely natural extension to paint nature with water. Um, it just makes sense. You know, the plants I'm painting are water, the oceans I'm painting are water, the clouds I'm painting are water, we are water. That's kind of a theme in my work. So yeah, I just love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Camille, your work looks directly at the natural world, often really lush foliage, lots of beautiful greens and, and, um, and blues sometimes, and you seem to translate it could you describe your process uh, for us? Well, the, the first part of the process is to, is the experience. So you're kind of, you're honoring the mark that, that nature makes on, on you as a person. Um, from a, you know, the process part starts with a photograph um, of a, a thing or a, a place. Um, then I, <clears throat> I run the photograph through a digital process um, in Adobe Illustrator and it, so it breaks it down and it's, so it starts to dissolve it. And I think of that as in a way kind of parallel to memory. You know, you, you have an experience and the memory of it changes as time goes by. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of directly relates to that. Um, so the, you know, the digital image is printed out according to kind of what size um, panel or, you know, the end product is going to be. And then I, <clears throat> I use a, uh, it's a tracing paper called Sorol. It's very, it's like carbon paper. Um, and I, you know, I lay it down on the panel and um, I draw all of the imagery onto the board. So the image is transferred. And then I go in and I paint and I use a lot of medium uh, and it creates kind of a, an unusual texture. Um, I use a very small brush. I actually brought a, I have a show and tell. So oh, there's the brush. size brush that I use. What size is it, Camille? So it is a, it's a, it's a two. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm putting it in front of my hair so you can see. But it, mm -hmm. so the other thing that, um, that speaks to me in making the work like this is it's very akin to needlework. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, um, in needlepoint, there's a stitch called the long and short stitch. It's, it's like painting with thread. Um, so it's, you know, it harkens back to, I mean, the mark making harkens back to needlework, which for me is tied to my mother and 
the artifacts of needlework that she left behind, you know, this becomes an artifact that I'm leaving behind, you know, eventually. Um, but anyway, and so the, you know, the image is transformed a little bit. Uh, your, what you see close up is very different than what you see from a distance. Um, so I think I covered it. <laughs> yeah, you did. And that's most everyone that I've talked to in front of your paintings, so, you know, they say, oh, it's so textural and you get close and it's super flat and there's this little illusion um, that happens. And now that you mentioned needlepoint, it does, there is something about your work that's, because those marks are so close together and so woven together, there is that connection. Yeah. Um, Brenda, can you describe your relationship to and connection with nature and plants? Sure. Um, gosh, this is one of my favorite topics. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I would say I've always been fascinated by plants. Like, I mean, looking back, even when I was, you know, three, four years old, my mom would say that I would make my own little gardens, you know, out mm -hmm. of whatever I could find, or I would just start burying leaves and stuff in the backyard, <laughs> you know, hoping to plant. So really, um, I've always been fascinated by that. My favorite color has been green since I could talk. It's just a love of mine. And I think um, I've had, you know, the good fortune of uh, being able to live in a lot of different places around the world. And I think um, what became interesting and a pattern to me over time was that the things that I remembered most about these places or loved about them were my interactions in nature. Um, and just especially walking through forests um, and understanding kind of local ecosystems. So um, <clears throat> that really has just been a pattern in my life. When I travel, um, I do love to be in cultural centers and cities, but I make a real effort to also experience um, the nature that's available to me in that particular place. Uh, I feel like it grounds me in that place in a different way and contextualizes the civilization and the culture that has come from that place in really mm -hmm. interesting ways. Um, but also, I mean, I now live in the center of Fort Worth and um, really in kind of an urban um, area. Uh, but yet for me, one of uh, my favorite things about my house is my garden. And I just, I surround myself with plants uh, whenever I can. I, it, they bring me peace uh, and I find them fascinating kind of as a symbol of um, renewal and how kind of magical the earth is. It just always comes back it always regenerates and it helps us in so many different ways. So uh, in a lot of ways, that feeling of peaceful or mutually beneficial coexistence with nature is something that informs my work and my life in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you live um, not too far from lots of green with parks and... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's great. It's important for me. I mean, other places I've lived... I've I've literally been on mountains or very close to forests or, you know, foothills. Um, and so it's a bigger challenge, I would say, in uh, North Texas because we've got kind of, you know, flatter prairies and stuff. But uh, mm -hmm. definitely, and you know that the Botanic Garden is also a huge, uh, <laughs> huge favorite of mine and spend a lot of time there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Camille, in that, mm -hmm. kind of in that vein, each of your pieces has um, a place name as a title. Could you maybe tell us about one or two of those places um, that you've captured in paint uh, that perhaps are especially meaningful to you? Well, I, I think probably the most meaningful um, place was when we went to Japan and we went in 2017 and for, for several reasons. Um, I didn't travel for a number of years, just for lots of reasons. Three young kids, just was have a little bit fearful. Um, and when I when I went through my marital transition in 2012, you know, you kind of step back and you say, I, I need to make some decisions about my life and what I want to do. Um, and one of them was to get out there a little bit more in the world and. Um, my kids were uh, overseas, uh, traveling around Asia, and we decided to meet up in Japan. Um, so that that was the furthest away I'd ever been uh, from home. 
And um, so in that way, it was kind of a breakthrough for me. But it was also, you know, um, Kyoto and um, Naoshima uh, were just really remarkable experiences. Naoshima is an island in a chain of about 3,000 islands off of the coast of Japan. And to get there, you, you know, we took a bullet train and a local train and a ferry. So you, you really have a, 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 there's this whole journey experience in getting there. Um, and they have a bunch of, I mean, I think four or five different Tadeo Ando museums on the island. I mean, the, the island has been developed as a art destination. Um, and so not only do you have, are you able to kind of immerse yourself in art, but it, you're the, the natural, uh, foliage is, is different. It's very unique. It just felt very lush. Um, one of the museums, the, the uh, Chichu Museum, had a little garden outside that is essentially a tribute garden to Monet mm -hmm. and has, I think, 200 different species of plants that were also in Monet's garden in Giberni. Um, so it's just, it's, it's a really, it's just a really incredible experience. And the way they look at art especially on this little island because you don't have a lot of, I mean, the population's small. I mean, you have visitors, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a very sacred feeling. You, you take your shoe, you remove your shoes before you go in the art spaces. It's your, uh, you know, it's sparsely populated. I mean, it, it felt like a religious experience. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there are several Monet paintings um, in the Chichu Museum as well that are just, the way you walk into the space and experience it was just incredible. Um, so that, that was, you know, I feel like that trip kind of set me off on this journey in making this particular body of work uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of directly <clears throat> related to experience. That's wonderful that 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 background, you know, looking at your pieces. Um, thank you. Uh, Brenda, you work both representationally and uh, abstractly. How does abstraction inform how you see the natural world and vice versa? You seem to have a real fluidity between the two. Yeah, so I think they're kind of um, the two sides of an experience in nature for me in some ways, right? Mm -hmm. One is, um, the more literal interaction that you might have with like a vista of a landscape or um, plants or a forest, um, something like that. And it's really, for me, those are kind of, um, you know, placing the viewer in those moments very directly. And then the second part of that experience for me is oftentimes this kind of transcendental, spiritual, um, intangible experience of nature, which I have. And uh, for me, in my mind, that translates into experiencing, the, experiencing these kind of untouchable elements of nature. So um, things like the feeling of water or the feeling of rain or um, the feeling of being around beautiful clouds or how you feel when you're walking through the ocean or swimming in the ocean. So there are these emotions directly connected to these natural elements um, that inform these abstract paintings. And they're often uh, entitled in ways that um, evoke those things. So um, oftentimes intangible things, or um, they reference things that I um, relish about being outdoors. And so it's very much um, taking those emotions that I have in nature and trying to translate them into a physical manifestation of what that feels like for me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah, it does. Um, Camille, what artists do you look to for inspiration? Um, if any, and if so, how have they informed your work? Well, um, I would say, I mean, if I go back to when I started painting, um, on a regular basis, this would have been in the 90s. I was, I was very fortunate to take classes from Terrell James, who's a Houston painter. Um, and she, she really taught me how to see art 
and the importance of mark making and react uh, reacting to mark making. Um, I would say that Wolf Kahn was one of the first artists that I really followed and uh, immersed myself in intensely. Um, you know, this past weekend we went to the Houston Museum and saw the the Hockney Van Gogh um, exhibit, which was, you know, Hockney's paintings are just, they're, they're happy and immersive and there's, you know, you love that in his later years, he's, he's just so energetic about his work, making work. Um, I also, the other, the other thing that lockdown has brought is I've kind of found a community of women online on Instagram that I really enjoy following, um, you know, obviously Brenda, um, but there are some painters, a couple of painters in Rhode Island whose work is just really, um, has a lot of information. A woman named Kristen Lamb. I mean, I've never, I've never met him. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope she may be one day. Um, uh, Jenny Brown, you know, they're just, there's a lot of, you see their posts and then you see their work and, um, I think that there's some Houston painters, young painters that I follow. Um, Bradley Curl and uh, Julie DeVries, who both are landscape painters and do beautiful work. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I'm obviously drawn to anybody that is making a lot of marks. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. yeah. I, I see when I first saw your work, especially because something about the cropped nature of your landscapes, they're right up against the picture plane, it feels like. Well, not in all cases, but they're close to the picture plane. And they're, the way that you segment them with the grid, I immediately thought of Hockney. Um, even some of his video work, landscape video work. Oh, yeah. The screen and the, it just really reminded me, um, uh, like your work and his work have a com could have a conversation. So, um, my last question, this is for both of you. What do you hope to do in the future? Do you have any inklings of where you know artistically and personally, if you want to throw that in? Um, do you have any inklings of where you might take your work next? I really love to ask artists that. Um, because I find that artists are happy to talk about what they're making now and also what they've made in the past, but they're even usually more excited to talk about what they're looking forward to making, so. Um, I can go ahead and start with that. Um, so it's hard. Uh, I, you know, this is one of the great struggles, I think, of being an artist for me is that um, there are so many things I want to paint. And so it's really hard for me to <laughs> focus very steadily on one thing. Um, and it usually has a lot to do with whatever natural element I'm like particularly enamored of at that moment. So I kind of bounce between clouds and plants and land and water. Um, but interestingly, um, I have started to also, I think, inspired by some of the events of the last year, um, especially a lot of the social justice issues going on right now, um, I started to explore incorporating um, the human figure into my natural scenes, which is a very different thing for me. And um, I did it in one of the pieces, I think, for this show as well. But um, so I'm really toying with the idea of pairing watercolor with oil painting, which is an unusual combination um, and kind of uh, how, how the human figure can kind of represent our relationship with nature, how they fit together, um, but also introducing um, the idea of um, brown bodies in nature specifically um, as a connection to like my Mexican heritage, my son who is black, um, and really trying to push the idea of um, the need for representation, the need for representation outside of being exoticized, outside of seeing things as kind of this, um, I don't know, the, the perception I guess of brown bodies as either dangerous or exoticized and, you know, taking them out of that realm and putting them into a very natural, um, beautiful, uh, 
space where uh, people can kind of see them in a way that they haven't before, perhaps. I'm interested in exploring that dialogue and I'm curious to see where it goes, whether it'll just be within natural scenes or it'll be in landscapes or maybe I'll start to focus on the figure a little more directly. Um, so yeah, that's a big change for me and kind of exciting. It is, it is. And you, Camille? Well, I think the, the thing I'm excited about the future is getting out <laughs> and, and just seeing art in person. And, you know, I, we're all kind of on the cusp of that now. So that, um, you know, I'm also getting to, ready to make a change in location, which is not only going to shape what I see, it's going to shape how I make because I'm going to be in a, I'm not going to have a real studio space. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always kind of uh, in my work thinking about how I deal with scale. Um, you know, whether my work, how do I translate my work to a larger scale? Uh, or how I might translate it into something with more dimension, you know, maybe three dimensions um, in, in looking at how, you know, when I, when I, my image is broken up digitally, how that might be used to translate into uh, three-dimensional work. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, lots, lots of, lots of changes and uh, you know, I, I feel like, you know, there's this great hope out there with the end of the pandemic and, uh, you know, it just, I'm, I'm excited about getting back out in the world. Mm. That's a wonderful way to end this interview. Thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Aaron. And thank you, Brenda. <laughs> oh, same. What a pleasure to work with you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And you can come see the exhibition through June 25th, uh, here at BRIT. Uh, which is in the cultural district. Um, and if you are not able to do that, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, go to our website, Brit.org. And there are images of Brenda and Camille's work. There are links to their um, respective websites if, if you are interested in, in learning more, um, which I hope you are. Thank you.